The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 8th, the Fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past the, well, just past eight o'clock in the morning. So if you are listening at the normal time, 11 a.m., I appreciate you doing that. I'm going to try to make today's show as pertinent as I can for you for that hour. But if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. Now, the only way to really get to me is really two ways. One would be to send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. The other would be if you're inside the Tiger's Den, and you can send me a private or a public ping out there. And I would love to hear from you. So uh, let's go ahead and get this show started on a fantastic Friday. Um, hope everybody ends up having a great Friday, a great weekend out there of course it's the weekend of thompson memorial, memorial on uh, saturday uh, so uh, a little bit of a somber but uh, uh beautiful time right because we're going to celebrate his life not his passing out there so let's go ahead and get this show started out here right now if we take a look at the uh, u.s equity futures they're a bit mixed you got the s p down one nasdaq is off 38 uh, dow futures up 17 uh, russell futures are down three points over in Asia last night, you had the uh, Shanghai uh, finish off uh, 19 points, about a half percent, one percent for the Hang Seng to the downside, 225 points. The Nikkei up 119, about a third of a percent. In, in uh, Europe right now, you've got the FTSE and the DAX trading to the downside. The DAX is off 108. We take a look at metals. You've got gold down about 10 bucks. Silver's off 26 cents. Copper's down nine pennies. Platinum's off 12 bucks. Palladium's down 21 bucks. Lights be crude is off a buck 23. And natural gas is up two pennies out there. 30 year treasuries up 20 ticks. Printed out at 117.23. Seven ticks the upside for the 10 year note. That's printed out at 110.13. U.S. dollar index up eight pennies out here. In fact, we're going to go take a look at the currency rates. Let's do this. Let's do what like we did yesterday. I'm going to start off uh, really how I go through my morning, uh, how I really go through through the newsletter process to get a feel and where I start with for the most part is what took place overnight not just with regard to US equity futures and metals and so forth but what's really taking place inside of the uh, markets in Asia Europe so let's do this here. I'm gonna go ahead and change my screen we'll get over to my white background screen out here and uh, <clears throat> voila here we go so in the upper left hand corner you've got the Shanghai index Shanghai index at uh, all that beautiful um, uh, money that uh, uh, easing inside of uh, Japan, inside of the Shanghai out there. And boy, that just simply was one heck of a rally. And that uh, end of the rally ended, by, by the way, on a TD9 count pattern. When you get a top, all it does is tell us price you should go back and test support. Maybe you're going to break through support. We never know. In this case here, support on uh, the indexy is the uh, is its oscillator and change line. You can see it's green. That tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero out there. Indicates that we're in bullish conditions. In fact, in this case here for the Shanghai, I wouldn't say it's a breakout, but uh, it's certainly a neutral position with a TD9 count top and price likely going to go target and test that high. By the way, what? What's that high? It's at 38.5130. So it's in a bullish position right now. Uh, that is the Shanghai. If we take a look at the Hang Seng, the Hang Seng is just a sideways consolidation. That sideways consolidation starting on the trading day of October the 8th out there. So you got a consolidation. Then we're up towards the top of that consolidation pattern. And you've got the uh, bottom down around the 20.062-ish level out there. So just a sideways consolidation. No idea whether it's uh, uh, consolidating sideways to make its next move lower or its next move higher out there. But it's going to make one of those next moves at some point in time. The Nikkei 225 is uh, formed a new A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. 
Uh, and that should take us back to this uh, wave number seven, this island reversal top, back here on October 15th. And the high of that top is at the 4257.34 level. And as long as price remains above its green on southern change line, that is the likely outcome. And the FTSE, now the FTSE, kind of interesting here if we open up these charts, it's testing its TD9 count bottom pattern today. So resistance, you can see here for the last uh, four out of five trading sessions, all rallies at day's end have found resistance at that red oscillator and change line, a signal that price wanted to move lower. And certainly we're seeing that today. Now it's testing support. Whether it holds that support at day's end or not, I don't know. If it does close below bar number eight of that TD9 count, that would be at 80.71.72. That will trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. We can draw that in here or click it. We'll just simply draw in the A to B point, and then we'll just simply move that to the C level out there. So you're going all the way down to our TD9 count uh, pattern out there. And this is only if price closes below that swing point that I gave you. And what that would then do is that would then take us into a key swing point here from back on August 5th of 2024. And that could really, so the A to B equals CD doesn't get us down to the bottom, but I think if we get inside that swing point, then we're likely to go test that low at 79.15.94. So watch that uh, bar number eight, that low from October the uh, 30th for the uh, FTSE. The DAX is really, if we open this up, so it's got a Rhodes momentum indicator top, continues to find resistance at its uh, oscillator and change line. Uh, you can see the last two trading sessions, and including this morning, price tried to take that out, was unable to do that. So we know that it's lost its momentum. Um, what does that mean? Does it mean it's going to go target 18,382.26? Well, I think much like the FTSE out here, there would be an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside if price closed below the October 31st low at 19,004.97. That pattern would look something like this. Let's go out here. Let's get our... Uh, so here's our A point at the top of that Rhodes momentum indicator top. There's your B point down. It happens to be letter B, which is part of the Chapman wave tools out here. And then the next high side that comes after that would be right here. So the one to one would only get us down really to the swing point low from October the 8th. If price were to close below that low being 189, 18, 9, 72, then that could trigger that we get back to its breakout level, 18, 382. The DAX has not generated that message right now, but we know that it has been unable to take out the resistance of its oscillator and change line. So now it's time to watch those lows out there. So that's what's going on across the uh, globe out there. Let's go take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Give me a moment here. We'll get over to that chart and at this set of charts. So if we get to the U.S. dollar index, we'll take a look at the uh, currency pairs that make up that indice out here. So we begin on the upper left, which is the euro. So the euro uh, negated a, a TD9 count bottom pattern. It did that uh, two days ago. And now what price has done, it just simply had a counter trend move into that oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line right now is printed out at 1.0797. If price remains below that, what it's going to do is put strength into the U.S. dollar. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the Japanese yen um, is trading below its green oscillator and change line, so it's lost momentum. So maybe just a tr sideways move out there. But it needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That is not in place. In the case of the Great British Pound, uh, yesterday a nice bit of a, a rally. But, uh, you know, today just giving that up. We've just been going up one or two days and back one, maybe uh, two days out here. Uh, so right now price is testing a key level of support. That's its oscillator and change line. If price were to close below it, it being 1.2946, that would then put uh, strength into the U.S. dollar indice, obviously weak weakness into the pound. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Now the U.S. dollar index did form a Rhodes momentum indicator top, uh, but price remains above resistance levels right now. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we are recording the show. It's 8.18 in the morning. If you're listening in at the normal time frame, uh, we'll be back to normal programming on Monday next week. Tuesday, we'll be back to the 8 to 9 uh, show, and then uh, should be the uh, regular programming the rest of the week out there. So we are uh, at uh, 8.18. You've got uh, S&P futures down 2, NASDAQ off 49, Dow's up uh, 21, and the Russell's off 5 points. Let's take, we'll take a look at the four daily and weekly equity future contracts. So we're just simply going to start here. Now, I'm going to start with the weekly time frames. Let's get a better picture for the week, how it's played out, and what it might be signaling to you and I. So on a weekly chart out here, we can see the ES Mini had both a Rhodes Mentum Indicator top and a TD9 count top, both those patterns basically forming the uh, week of, uh, well, a October 18th, that week, as well as the following week, which is last week. Now, price pulled back, closed last week just below the top of its uh, weekly profile. We got back above it this week, and now we're going to negate those signals. Unless there's some huge sell-off today, or let me just give you the number. If the ES Mini closes above 59, 27, 25, that pattern will get negated. And what does that suggest to us? That suggests that the rally should continue because resistance will have failed. So we take like a weekly A to B equals CD patterns out here. You know, you could say there would even be, so the only one that you could really, well, you could draw in a number of them, but one that you could draw in here would look like this. Let's uh, draw in our A to B point, and then let's just move that over to the C level. So be coming all the way back here, October 27th, that was October 27, 2023. That could be the A point. The B point out here would be where we got that uh, road, where we got uh, up at the high on April the 5th out there. I'm just simply going to grab this, move this, give you a potential price projection, at least of this A to B equal CD pattern. And that would get us up towards the 60... 233 level. That's coming from the weekly time frame chart. So the key today is don't let's just not uh, focus only on the daily time frame of where do we close at the day and what does that signal? What is the weekly pattern which would uh, trump or should trump so to speak the uh, daily pattern out there. So we're watching today is level of 59 27 25. If we close above that, that's signaling to you and I that a uh, we should move further. We should move higher out there. If we take a look at the NQ the NQ at this stage is not yet taken out as TD9 count Rosemont indicator top on the weekly basis, but it's early in the day. If price was able to close the day above 21, 237.75, and we're trading above profile resistance and its green oscillator and change line, there's not any reason right now, at least on a weekly basis, to suggest that price is not going to go target that. Whether that's this week or whether that's next week, we're trading inside that swing point, it should go target that high. And if it takes it out, then we've got another A to B equals CD pattern on the upside on a weekly time frame out there. And no other 
higher topping signal on the weekly and the uh, current uh, move higher. We take a look at the Dow Equity Future Contract. Dow Equity Future Contract is likely going to negate today. All it needs to do is close above the high of 43.581. 43,581. If price closes above that in the YM today, it's going to negate a wave seven top. It's going to negate a uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator top, a TD nine count top. And so you want to watch that level today. We take a look at the Russell 2000. It's been a good week, right? If we take now the only, you know, right now the weakness here is really primarily inside of the NQ. So you want to keep an eye certainly on that today. What um, the Russell 2000 is trading about profile resistance above its green oscillator and change line. The only resistance is the high from back on, uh, looks like August 31st, that high being 2343 or 2390. So if we close above 2343 out there, you've got a breakout message on the monthly, uh, the weekly time frame for the Russell 2000. Now let's take a look at the dailies. Here's what I can share with you about the dailies. Each of these have at least attained the one to one A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That says that the ES mini needs to generate a bearish reversal candle as does the NQ, as does the YM, as does the Russell 2000. So right now we're in full breakout mode inside the ES mini. We're trading above all resistance levels. That would be profile resistance. It's also and change line, no topping signal. I know if we get a bearish reversal candle, that's a, uh, that's a different story out there. Same thing with regard to the NQ. Now, in the case of the NQ, it's targeting right now where the resistance level is at. We can see, is that all-time high? Is that TD9 count breakdown resistance level? And all that it needs to do is close above that 21, 237, 75 level out there. So you want to watch that at day's end. You close above that, uh, then we likely continue higher, higher to where? Well, it's already at the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD level. The 1 to 1.272 would take you up to 21,995. So close above 21. 237.75 today and the daily, you know, is going to a daily and weekly, obviously, is going to be uh, put us into all out bullish mode inside of the NQ. If we take a look at the uh, Dow equity future contract, the Dow, as you can see, a couple days ago negated its TD nine count uh, topping pattern out there. And so uh, it's already attained. It's well, what it's targeting. It's above the one to one A to B equal city. Its next uh, target price target to the upside is 44. 210 out there and then if we take a look and finish this off and take a look at the Russell 2000 again it attained it said it yesterday it attained the 1.272 a to b equals cd level out there so its next price projection level to the upside is 2495 out there again it needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm some type of top so that's our daily and our weekly equity futures charts out there uh, just to give you a better bigger picture because now we've spent probably most of the rest of the uh, session you know on intraday charts for example here's the ES mini. What are the intraday charts for the ES mini times? Well, if you're real ultra short term, and we ought to, you know, out of respect for time, we ought to take a look at these 10 minute charts. What are their signals out here? So, on a 10 minute basis, we had a nice TD9 count top that completed at 750. That TD9 count top lasted well up until this time frame that we're in right now. Now, this is 10 minutes, it's 824, it's got six minutes left. A close above the TD9 count high, 600250, as well as closing above the top of that 10 minute profile, 600. Zero three out there is going to signal we're headed higher. Headed higher to where? Well, I'd say back to its prior swing point from about four in the morning out there, and that would be up to that level about 6,975. So the 10 minute chart, watch its close as we get into 8.30, about six, five and a half minutes from now. And it looks to me like it's going to try to simply take that level out. Now, the 15 minute basis, it's got bar number eight right now. That says on a 15 minute time frame, it could form a top between now by 8.30, between 8.30 and nine this morning. Uh, the e, uh, the 30 minute time frame chart looks like it wants to target 6,005. The uh, 60 minute time frame chart says that if price is able to close above on an hourly basis, so this would be at nine this morning, if price is able to close above the center of its profile the center of that profile is at the 6002 level if price is able to close above that then we'd like to get up to 6010 and above that 6018 out there um Nothing else really. Uh, if you take a look at the 240 minute chart, it's got a Rhodes Mentum indicator top with price finding support at its oscillator and change line. So a price uh, close above, well, still it's going to be a price. Well, quite frankly, it's really just a price close above uh, 6,975. That negates that signal and suggests that we move higher out there. So those are the levels to be watching inside of the ES Mini from an intraday standpoint. Let's see what the NQ can uh, fire up for us out here. Give me a moment here. We'll get these uh, charts up on our screen. And on the NQ, come on, populate for us. Dead silence out there. I didn't watch a football game last night, but I, I understand it was a pretty good one. 
Um, just, uh, I, I don't know what we were doing last night, but uh, didn't get a chance to watch football. Okay, so inside the NQ, um, I'm looking for any kind of a uh, topping pattern. So the five-hour topping pattern certainly has got an A to B equals CD pattern, I would assume. We could probably have to go way back, though, to find establish that. Um, yeah. I, so all that I can say here, I don't really have a topping signal, uh, but you do have a bearish engulfing candle. Maybe what the uh, five-hour chart is telling us is that the NQ wants to go target 20, 21, or 37. So before we jump to that conclusion, let's start with the 10-minute chart out here. The 10-minute chart right now formed a TD nine-count top and did it at 750. A close above that high, 21, 189. That's leveled right down your pad of paper. We'll suggest that we move up towards 21, 239. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 8.30 in the morning. We are recording this show early between 8 and 9. Uh, we're replaying this, obviously, from the 11 to 12 uh, time frame out there. Hector had written in this morning and asked, uh, how is gold performing in the uh, major currencies? Now, I've got the um, the minor currencies, if you will. I've got the Middle Eastern currencies up on our chart. So when you take a look at each of them are labeled, you can see how the uh, gold is trading in each of these currencies. Now, here's the danger. There's a danger that gold has made a significant top. 
Uh, I generated a uh, pretty nice, uh, I thought, uh, uh, special report newsletter on uh, gold out there. Um, and so here's one of the things that we need to be concerned about. Remember, as gold is rallying in all of the major currencies out there uh, and doing it at the same time, that is an absolute outright bullish market. It's a worldwide bullish market. It's really important to understand how instruments that you're trading uh, are trading, especially if you're trading large caps, uh, how they are how you how they are trading in terms of those major currencies you just those are the best bull markets when something's rising in all the major currencies out here and we had gold really doing the same thing the danger becomes when the um you know just kind of picture a school of fish you know and they're going one way and then all of a sudden they just make a beeline and turn right around or turn to the left or turn to the right but they change direction out here when significant tops form my studies show that you will get a topping pattern or everything will top at about the same time almost to the day obviously we got time zone differences out there so you know kind of give it a 48 hour time window here you can see that uh priced in uh whether it's the iranian real the kuwaiti din uh, kuwaiti dinar the egyptian pound the syrian pound the jordanian uh dinar the saudi real um you see that all of them have basically at this stage here topped at the uh, same time now, if we take a look at the major currency pairs, those are the currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index, as well as what's going on inside of Australia, inside of the Chinese yuan out here. Again, those yellow lines, you can see that basically right to the day is when we've made highs out here at this stage. So we have to be concerned that, uh, that there is a potential major top out there. Um, so we'll watch that. We'll start to see, with regard to gold, we would start to see, um, we'd start to see, uh, patterns fail, support levels fail to the downside. So let's just flip over to how gold is actually trading right now. Take a look at Stevie's multi time frame charts out here, get a feel for what's being communicated to us. So on a monthly time frame, there's no topping signal. Uh, now, if we were to get at the end of the month, if we were to get a bearish reversal candle, that would change out there. So the monthly chart says, you know, Stevie, I think it's just a timeout. Everybody's taking a timeout, and I still want to add higher. But if we did get a bearish reversal candle out here, we won't know. It's too early in the month to know that would confirm a top. And then that would be saying, hmm. Because that would then take us to the TD9 count top that completes today inside of gold. And we can see that price is trading below that green oscillator and change. And I don't know where it ends the day. If it ends the day above 2719, we're 2700 right now, that would be a bullish outcome. You'd have a TD9 count top, yes, but you'd have that green oscillator and change line have been tested and rejected. So this is right now, the message here is that price has lost its momentum. We take a look at the daily time frame chart out there. Well, we sort of know that. Right, we have a nice road momentum indicator top out here. It pushed price all the way back towards its TD9 count breakout level. We've rallied off of that. There's a new profile that's attempting to form this morning. The profile uh, bottom of that profile, which we're trading below, is at 27.10 and 90. Watch that at day's end. Uh, the uh, top of the uh, profile is at 27.88, uh, uh, 27.86.70. Now, the one thing that says that maybe, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Actually. I'm going to it's going to be easier i think if i set this up on another screen uh so just give me a moment to do that what i'm trying to set up here if you notice the profile where the heck is that if you notice today's profile inside of the third uh, inside of gold uh what you can see is that it actually wraps around the prior profile no it's not up on this chart here like give me one second it's a, it's a profile that's attempting to form so i don't know i won't know until really quite frankly sunday night whether it takes place or not i'm i'm, shoot, I'm trying to set this up on the other chart here uh but uh i don't know if it's picking up that profile level or not it was earlier in the morning um like at about five and no, I don't have it. So I'm not going to. So right now, I'm just going to I'll have to expand this out and just simply communicate to you again what I've seen here. If we take a look at uh, gold, makes it a little bit easier right now. See this profile, how it wraps around the prior profile. This is a signal of a consolidating market out there. So it may just be the consolidation. The consolidation low could be at about the 2645 level. Consolidation high not established. Well, I guess you could say because we did have two candles up at this high, you know, that could be the high of the consolidation pattern. But watch 27.10.9 today. Price close above it. We'd have two days in a rally, but it also suggests that maybe we get up to that 27.41. 2755 level out there. If we look at the intraday charts here for gold, what do we see? 
Um, we see a two-hour Rosemont Dominique bottom pattern. That led to uh, just simply a move higher. Uh, what did not form a top, it for formed a TD9 count pattern, but the high of that pattern came on bar number six. And right now, all that that led to was a, price, was a test of support which was the bottom of his profile, really testing, I would say, kind of a consolidation with inside his profile levels here. The level to watch on a two-hour time frame, two-hour bar, is going to be 2689-ish, probably just a tad lower than that. Price begins, let's call it 2787, 2687. Price starts trading below that, we likely get to the 2664 level. But right now, um, all we've seen is a consolidation pattern here on the two-hour chart, uh, same kind of you know the 60 minute time frame chart had a nice erosement indicator bottom yesterday led to a nice rally the td9 count top was negated at about uh, four o'clock yesterday afternoon uh now we've seen a, a retracement for reasons you know just i didn't have a topping pattern out there in fact the topping pattern got negated now it didn't generate a bottoming signal the question is will it get back inside its profile it's an equally balanced profile so we don't have a bullish or bearish structure place where we could say where a counter trend rally would end but as long as price remains above 26.99 it suggests a rally to 27.06 or 27.15 out there uh, so with regard to this current leg in gold with regard to yesterday's move out there um, what we're really looking for is to see how these retracements, these intraday retracements get handled. So if we do start trading higher from here, it's not like I've got a bottoming pattern. We didn't have a topping pattern on the time frames we we're looking at, just looking at whether price held support or didn't. The 60-minute time frame chart did not. The 120 minute chart did so we're going to just simply set up that 2687 number is the key level uh to the uh to the downside now i'm pretty sure i'm just going to go look on my apogee and perigee charts that we are well below yeah we're well below that's all the way up at 2787 out there so let's bring gold home because that sounded pretty uh, confusing to stevie out there and that is we're just simply concerned uh that there could be a significant top forming inside of gold because it's basically made high in every major minor currency out there at the same time so we got to keep real close check on these charts out here what do you expect today until support gets broken i'd say we likely rally a bit further out there so let's uh, we do have a request uh so we took care of hector's request that just simply i hope i changed over yeah okay good um so now what we're going to do is, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at ticker symbol GEO, and this reflects inside the Tiger's Den. And, oh, by the way, Vic, I, Vic, very nice uh, message, email that you sent to me. I couldn't tell if there was an instrument that you wanted me to uh, uh, to look up for you. So if there was, if you could just write back to me. If not, you know, don't worry about it. So when we get back to this break, we're going to take a look at GEO. I used to play golf uh, with the uh, CEO um, of that uh, company. We'll be right back. trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. 
That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks, here. We're taking a look at ticker symbol GEO. It's had one heck of a month out here, one heck of a week, uh, and a, one heck of a couple of days out there. It's trading right now, or closed, I should say, at 2443. Last night, the question inside the Tiger's Den is, uh, when, should this, uh, is when should this trader get off the uh, train, so to speak? So let's start with our longer-term time frame and see what it's doing. That's going to be the monthly chart. So we take a look at the monthly chart. The monthly chart shows that right now price is trading above its second T9 count breakdown level at 2403. We don't know where it's going to end the month, but as we take a look at this here, what we're doing this week is we're negating a TD9 count pattern out there. This suggests that it really wants to move higher. Again, a close about 2403 is going to suggest you get all the way back to the 34 type area. So longer term, that's what the picture is. You're going to make the decision. I'm going to share with you what the charts are communicating. There's no topping pattern right now in the monthly time frame. The same is true for the weekly time frame. One of the biggest bar number six is, so I suppose this maybe is election. Uh, related. Um, do you think that's the case, Fletch, out there? In other words, you know, they're one of the largest uh, incarceration uh, facility companies around, to my knowledge, out there. Is that uh, part of the roundup uh, process? So on a weekly time frame, I don't have any kind of a uh, topping pattern out here. Um, trying to figure out, yeah, I don't have any kind of a topping. But it's, it's really more wave C than it is wave G. So the weekly chart is an all-out bullish formation. Of course, there's going to be retracements. So uh, and here, in the case of the uh, daily time frame chart, there is a wave number seven top. So if you get a lower high, then that's going to suggest that the daily has a top and price should pull back to support. Now, there's likely going to be a new profile that forms. I, I don't control that or not um, before now and then. But this would suggest... If you get a lower high today, lower high today than yesterday, wave number seven is in place. You could be, see a pullback all the way to 1761 ish out there. So something that can you know pay attention to. But how do we know? Look, if you take a look at there's 295 minute bars in a day. There's no topping signal here. So this looks like it wants to trade higher. Let me see just in the pre market what is this doing here? Is there any any kind of signal here? So GEO. I, I got to believe it's thinly traded in the pre-market, 25.36. So that's, uh, you know, it just, again, confirming what we're already taking a look at, uh, Fletch, is that price should continue to resume higher. Now, that's a two-hour chart, 330-minute bars in a daily time frame. So this is the one to really be paying attention to. So the, uh, let me get my cursor out here. So 130 minutes would take you to um, 1, 11.40 this morning. So at 11.40 this morning, what GEO should do for the 130-minute time frame is complete a TD9 count top. Now, right now, uh, support would be that oscillator and change line down to 20.31. Um, 
Let's look at the a next shorter term time frame chart. And that's going to be the 65. The 65 minute chart, assuming that in the pre market, it's going to reflect what we see in the post market an hour and 15 minutes from now. Price is going to negate a TD nine count pattern out there. So that would suggest that price does move higher, you know, possibly even in towards that 1140 session out there. So it requires a hourly a 65 minute close. Uh, so it's going to be at 1035. A close above uh, 2445 negates that signal out there. And again, the pre market right now, 2539 is its nut. On a uh, 30 minute basis, there's no topping pattern out here. And on a 15 minute time frame chart, you're going to get a TD9 count top that goes ahead and completes here at 9 a.m. So that could lead to a move lower. Its first level key level of support fletch would be down at 23.67. So um, I'm sure you've had a, a nice gains out here. Of course, um, you know you can always uh, you can always take your uh, get your capital back. So uh, sell enough shares to get your capital back. Then you've got that free trade. But if you're asking me, do I see any kind of significant top out there? Well, I've shared with you what we do see. Nothing really points to any kind of significant top just yet out there. But nice trade on uh, your part. But that's what all those multi time frame charts are telling us. So we're not just looking at the daily, weekly, and monthly. We went ahead and looked to see what was going on underneath the covers. And you're, and you're very welcome. Uh, InnoVisual inside the Tiger's Den asked the question, is silver in a similar condition as gold? or does it have more uh, bullishness now due to getting a later start? So um, here's the issue that I have. I'm going to switch over to the uh, black background charts. Change windows. And I'm going to first share with you, there's there's important piece of information in silver that I don't have access to with regard to my, my uh, system out here. So as an example, let me just do Let me just open up a brand new chart. Let's do this here, and we'll do it on a uh, yearly basis. I'll set it back to a yearly basis out here. There we go. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in gold. I'm just going to put in the continuous contract. Oops, on side F. So we've got that here on a yearly basis. So when we take a look at gold, well, let me actually, let me uh, first, uh, let me let me also uh, put silver in here. So a new instant. So we're going to look at silver, the same thing. SI, and then we're going to just make this uh, make this also a candle uh, candle chart out here. And you're going to insert that. Okay, so in the bottom section here, we're going to see silver. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, well, I take that back. Something must have changed out here because I did not have what I was going to say is number one, I did not have access. I'm not going to give you the full spiel of what I had given to subscribers. I've given you a bunch right now. But uh, here, first, let me answer the question this way. When I first looked at it, I didn't have access to the data that took us back before 1980. I'm going to make 1980 as a key level. Any of you that want to do some work over the weekend and see why Stevie thinks that there might be a, uh, a significant top out here, Go look at the patterns there, daily, weekly, and monthly. And then you can write me over the weekend if you want. You can share, although I won't be here that much, maybe back late Sunday or what have you. Um, but I didn't have the access to the uh, data in 1980, whereas I did in gold. So we do not, first of all, we don't have the same patterns, right? We're not trading at new all-time highs inside of silver. We are inside of gold out there. Inside of gold, we've got that nice A to B equals CD pattern that you can see out here. And in this case here on a yearly basis, we've hit the one-to-one -one price objective out there. Um, in the case of silver, we don't have that. So we're looking at totally different patterns out here. But what I can share with you is just simply this and answer the question is, well, we'll go take away the silver charts, absolutely. But I can answer the question for you like this, you know, visual. If gold has a, a top and it's formed a significant top, even if silver doesn't have those patterns, what are the chances that silver's going to pull back with it? Yeah, it's a pretty good odds that we would see that. So I would, you know, more of my emphasis, if you will, would be on silver. Now, I'm going to go ahead and we'll change back to the uh, to the white background screens. We'll pull up the uh, multi time frame set of charts for silver and just see what they're communicating to us daily, weekly, monthly, and intraday. Um, so if you give me a minute here, we will get back to the white set of screens. So on a monthly basis, what silver has been struggling to do is silver has been struggling to take out a prior Rhodes Mintum indicator top, and that takes us back to February of 2021. It needs a close above this level, 33.51. So I would say that silver is weaker than gold, right? I mean, gold's just simply continue to move higher. Silver's going to form bar number eight today. It's still not a TD9 count top or anything. 
Uh, but what it would be on a weekly, on a monthly basis, well, the month isn't over, but it could generate a sell the D point top if it does generate a bearish reversal candle. But silver on a monthly basis, really struggling, has not been able to take out a key high. The weekly time frame has a uh, completed TD9 count top out here. And price right now is just simply trading with inside its profile. And it got back towards its bullish buy zone yesterday. And that was between 3014 and 3084. We'll be right back. We'll finish taking a look at silver for InnoVisual inside our Tiger's Den. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at silver. This is the uh, weekly time frame chart. We're taking a look at its TD9 count top. Now, here's the confusing message with regard to silver, you know, and that is, look, we took a look at the daily profile um, for gold and how it wrapped around the new profiles, wrapping around the prior profile, kind of suggests, or the weekly time frame might have been, but suggested consolidation. Here, the profile is actually formed above the prior profile. And that, from a trend standpoint, that's a bullish message. So what I would make is a key level of support that, if broken, is going to suggest that we could have a change in trend here would be at 3014. This uh, weekly time frame profile has support between 3014 and 3084 and resistance up at the 3436 level. We can see how the oscillator and change line this week has begun to act as resistance versus support. So that suggests we could see higher price. There could be a bit of a change in trend. And that would suggest that the rally that we saw yesterday um, uh, and maybe an additional rally today 
could just be nothing more than a two-day, two to four-day counter trend move out there. So we've got to be careful about that. Now, in the silver, uh, silver's daily chart, had a nice TD9 count top and took price right back to the breakout level support. So price couldn't bust them down. It has a new daily profile, support at 3131, resistance up at 3356. The next upside price target for silver would be up at about the 33 05 level and it should be able to make that move but what are the intraday charts communicating to us well on a 30 minute time frame it had a rose momentum indicator topping signal i don't have a bottom pattern i don't really see an a to b i guess i could draw in an a to b equals cd pattern here to the downside but either way here's what we do have going on on a 30 minute basis we have a profile change in trend price is going to close above the top of that profile 3171 for two consecutive bars that's going to suggest to move to 3213 so it should see a bit of a rally there the 120 minute time frame chart says that if price can close above the top of its bearish structured profile 3207 we ought to see a move to 3285 out there. We take a look at the 240 minute time frame chart. Roach momentum indicator bottom pattern price trade above the center of its profile. Looks like it wants to sit, move up to 3259. So, folks, uh, was that the end of the show? I, well, look, folks, have a, a fantastic weekend out there. I'll be back with you Monday at my normal regular programming hour at 11 a.m. sharp. Uh, stay tuned, though. I'm going to do the 9 a.m. update that will cover a few more instruments. We'll be right back. Consistency you're looking for.